last year along about the same time. The rematch for the World Championship between the New York Giants, champions of the Eastern Division of the National League, and the Baltimore Colts, champions of the Western Division of the National Football League. The game last year called one of the greatest ever played, a 23-17 victory that went to the Baltimore Colts in overtime, the first sudden-death overtime ball game in the history of the National League. And a lot of fans are looking for that type of ball game again today. The weatherman has certainly cooperated in Baltimore. We've got a jam-packed stadium, 57,557. And this game has been sold out since the day the Baltimore Colts won the Western Division title. The weatherman, well, it's overcast, although the sun has been shining most of the day here in Baltimore. And it's a little overcast right now, although the sun may break through any moment. The temperature, believe it or not, in Baltimore, Maryland in December is 51 degrees. The humidity, 85%. The wind is a crosswind, and I don't believe will be a factor uh, in this ball game today. Now, in the uh, game today, field goal checking should have a lot to do with it. Pat Summerall and Steve Meyer. We'll have the starting lineup for you in just a moment. As I mentioned a moment ago, this uh, ball game today, although everybody's looking for an explosive type of a ball game, with the offense, the best in the National League, uh, and generated by the Baltimore Colts with their great engineer, the quarterback John Unitas, going against the best defense in the National Football League. Engineered and sparked by great Sam Huff. And uh, although uh, they're expecting an explosive ball game, it could get down to a field goal kicking contest, matching Pat Summerall of the New York Giants against Steve Meyer. And Summerall was a very vital factor in the Giants' march to the Eastern Division Championship this year. Now, in scoring, New York finished its regular season second only to Baltimore, and through late games, the previously indifferent Giants scorers churned up a 37-point-a-game pace. Before that, it had been but 17 per game on the average. Charlie Connerly, 12 years, was about standing quarterback. Reached league leadership as a passer this year for the first time in his long, illustrious career. And Frank Gifford, the great running back, of the New York Giants is rated one of the top all-around offensive backs pro football has ever seen. Now, Connerly never has much trouble connecting with Gifford, Kyle Road, or Bob Schnelker when the Giants need to move offensively. Now, the Giant defense is the greatest, but they don't need shutouts to win. And the Baltimore defense has had some great moments of its own. I remember on opening day here in this very stadium, they held the high-scoring Detroit Lions to only nine points and they held the Chicago Bears with their, their great offense to only seven points. And in the vital, tremendous clash with San Francisco that first set cold feet firmly on the championship road, the 49ers were limited to a remarkable three first downs and 133 yards total, 35 rushing and 98 passes. In interception, a chief factor in the Western title march, the Baltimore defense has been almost fantastic. A near record 40 enemy passes were theft this year, no fewer than 17 by the linebackers. And when you stop and analyze that, it's almost unbelievable when linebackers can come up with 17 pass interceptions. And Don Shinnick, one of the linebackers, grabbed seven to tie for the league leadership, which may be the first time this feat has ever been performed by a linebacker. And Jim Lee Howell, the coach of the Giants, concedes that his part of defense considered stronger this year by the addition of Dick Lynch and return of Dick Nolan in the backfield probably hasn't yet been put to a test anything like the one it will experience from the Baltimore Colts today. While we're waiting for the introduction and to give you a rundown on the starting lineups, the way they will operate and to describe for you the first half of this ball game for the World Professional Football Championship is an old class of mine from Texas Christian University and the very able broadcaster of the Philadelphia Phillies of the National Baseball League and the Philadelphia Eagles of the National Football League. A gentleman who's been calling professional football. Well, if I gave you how many years, I'd be giving away some ages, so I won't do that. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is by song. Waiting for the whistle, and there she goes. Myra approaches the football. It's a high end over and that's going to the goal line, and five yards deep. It's picked off by King, who races to the 10. He's up the middle and comes to the 18 or 20-yard line. Bill King, on the reception of the kickoff, is down at that point, and it will now go to the Giants. New York ball. Smack on the 20. Now in the backfield, it'll be Connolly, Gifford, Webster, and Triplett. Signals being barked out for the 12-year veteran, Chuck Connolly. They're taking a long count. 
Connolly with it. It's going to the air immediately. Fade five. Throws deep. And it is completed. A rope first down on the 41-yard line. A magnificent pass pattern. And it was brought down and out. And Milt Davis chased him out of bounds. So Connolly, who was the outstanding pass passer in the National Football League this past year, has already connected. And it puts the ball back. Put it on the 42-yard line. The Colts are up in practically a seven-man line. Moving out to a six now as they loop. The ball goes on a reverse to Gifford to the right. Gifford swings wide. Gifford to the 50. Gifford to the 45. Gifford goes to the Colts 35 or six-yard line. Harold Passett eventually got him down. Two plays and two first downs, and the Giants are rolling. They are now into the territory of the Colts and a 22-yard scamper by Gifford. Wide swing that time, running away from Webster, who was flanked off to the left. Webster goes out wide to the right. Connerly, fade five, strikes the pass, elects the run. He's being rushed deep to the 50. He is mailed. Big Daddy Lipscomb, a 288-pounder, dragging down Connerly and closing back at the 50-yard line. A tremendous 18-yard loss for the Giants. And the Colts followers roar. Fourth down and long yardage now as the Giants send in their kicking team. And they possess one of the finest in Don Chandler. Backing off, looking for the kick now. Double safety Johnny Sample is one. And the other is Carl Tatham. Chandler standing a good 12 yards deep around his own 37-yard line. Takes the pass. Gets into the football. A beauty. It's going to go down to the goal line. And the Colts elect to let it go out the end zone. Touchback. Baltimore with the ball for the first time in the game. First and 10 on a 50-yard boot by Chandler. Johnny Unitas. They're coming up over the ball with Lenny Moore. Blank wide. Unitas goes to the air. Spot pass and connects to Mutzler, who takes it up on the 25-yard line. One of those quick spot passes just over the line. Dick Nolan coming along. One of the fine defenders on the giant secondary. Bangs him down. It's a five-yard gain. Second down and five to go. And just as you might expect, with the top billing going to Connolly and Unitas, so far that's what we're getting. Unitas once again takes the long count. Defensive six-man line for the Giants. Unitas fades. He fires. He throws into the flat. Amici has it. Alan Amici is up to the 35 and held as he goes out of bounds to the far side. Dick Lynch finally knocked him out of bounds. Colt first down. Baltimore has racked up its first first down and it's now resting on the 37-yard line. 13, make it 14 yards on the swing pattern that goes from Unitas to Amici. You think of Amici, of course, as their great inside runner, but it goes to prove the great balance of the Colts team that they flip the ball to him occasionally. Mike Summer, flanker to the right again. Colts line up with Unitas. He takes the pass. He gives to Amici, and he takes the draw play up to the 40. Down in the middle of that line by Jim Katkavich, a demon at defensive left end. The referee today, Mr. Ron Gibbs, one of the greatest in the business, has placed the ball on the 40-yard line. A three-yard net gain. It is second down and seven to go. Now with the left end, Raymond Berry going out, it's very apparent that Dick Lynch is covering him man for man. How long he can do that remains to be seen. Unitas is back. Unitas throws, competing the more. He's at the 40, the 35. Four goes for a touchdown. Magnificent pass pattern with Johnny Unitas faking to Barry, shooting down the middle on a diagonal pass. Lenny Moore caught the ball around the 35-yard line and got by everybody. 6-0 the Colts lead. Moore scored the touchdown. Now Steve Myra will try for the seventh point. Ball is being held by Ray Brown. Myra didn't miss one all year. The kick is up, and the kick is good. There's timeout on the field. Score the Colts 7, New York Giants nothing hit Mr. Lenny Moore in the midriff, and he dashed over with not a giant. The kickoff, Myra boots high, end over end kick. 
Morrison and King are waiting, two yards deep behind the goal. Taken by Phil King, who races to the 10, comes to the straight of the 20, King to the 25. They bounce him out of bounds as he approaches the 33, and that's where he goes out. Chased out by Jim Butler, and the Giants now are in possession. Tremendous action, and if you love offensive football as they play it in the National Football League, we've got it today in the city of Baltimore. Fourth down, Giants are in kick formation. Don Chandler back to boot, second time that he's been back. He booted one 50 yards a moment ago. Good protection, gets it off, it's over in, waiting for it at the 28-yard line. That's Johnny Sample. First man down, loses him. Sample up the sideline to the 40. Stays on his feet, Huck puts the sideline. 40, 30, he's to the 25. Look at him go, he's down to the 15. The officials apparently have detected that the run by Johnny Sample, he touched the sideline, but what a twisting run it was. Flashing feet down the near sideline, but he was out of bounds. And in football, remember, if you touch the sideline, you are out. So the ball comes back. Instead of having a first down around the 15-yard line, it's the Colts in possession on their own, 43. Baltimore's ball. The Colts leading by 7 to nothing. 40 yards from Unitas to Lenny Moore. Raymond Berry wide to the left. Unitas goes back. Johnny looks. He fakes. He's being rushed. He spins out. Takes one man but falls on his own 30-yard line. And here's a tremendous loss, pushing him back 14 yards. The pressure was applied that time by Jim Katkavich, left in, and Dick Littlemore Modulewski of Maryland fame. So the Colts are back on their own 30. Third down and long yardage. Jimmy Patton is one of the safety men, and Lynn Crow is the other. Chair waits. He's going to kick from around the 18. He gets it very high, not too deep. Fair catch indicated, and it is a fair catch at the 40-yard line. Jim Patton takes the ball. The New Yorkers have it on their own 40. A short kick of only 30 yards. Very, very high and not very deep. So New York takes it for the third time in the game. Remember, at the outset, they grabbed the kickoff and quickly went to the air for a first down, and then on a Gifford run, gained another first down. Gifford is the flanker on practically every play. All right, Connolly gives. They're going to lead away from Gifford. It's Webster with the ball. He tries for the first down. He rolls up over the 50-yard line, and he's made the yardage, I do believe. Gino Marchetti, a great defender, flanking, has moved in to make the tackle on Webster, and it is a first down, and the Giants now have recorded their third first down of the ball game. They want to put Webster out as a flanker and run Triplett and Gifford. Gifford as the back's directly behind Connolly. Connolly looks over the defense, gives to Gifford, running wide. That reverse. He made a first down on one of them, and he's down to the 45 and spins and goes out of bounds on the far side of the field. Andy Nelson, a defensive halfback of Memphis State, rushed in, and Gifford, for his wide effort that time, going around that right corner, brings it down to... The 43-yard line. Gifford is coming wide this way. Connolly gives off on the draw play. Through the middle. First down. There goes Triplett as he hits to the 30 and goes to the 25, the 20, and down to the 15-yard line. Boy, they parted that line, and away he went. Now Triplett. Magnificent 28-yard run. And here the Giants now are throwing up as far as the scoring threat as they've had. Yes, we're going to get a timeout right now. There's time out on the field, the score, the Baltimore Colts 7, the New York Giants nothing. Webster is out wide to the right, Connolly goes back, he's got a pass, down the middle, man is rooked, he can't get to the ball. He had moved just behind one of the uprights, but the ball was just over his head. Now Road has fallen in the end zone, and uh, he's a little bit slow getting up. Uh, Road has been shaken up on that play, as Connolly overshot his mark, Johnny Sample, was covering, and it was one of those sort of high arch passes. And uh, I don't know if he had a little difficulty getting around the goalpost or not. Van, you've got the binoculars on. Maybe you could see it a little better than I could. It looked uh, by as though uh, Sample and Roach collided for the ball, and uh, inadvertently his knee evidently hit him somewhere around the neighborhood of the chin. Taha has gone in and left in for Roach. They give the ball, Connolly to Triplett, and Triplett, who just gained the first down for them, goes roaring up through the center of the line again and brings it down, I would say, to the 12-yard line. Gene Lipscomb and Gino Marchetti, two all-pro defenders in the National Football League. 
and two who'll be going to the annual Pro Bowl game in Los Angeles on January 17th are converged on the tackle. Time is running down to the last three minutes and 56 seconds of the first quarter. Connolly fires for the corner. He hits the receiver, and I believe he's inbound. He caught the ball in the six-yard line. That's Bob Schnelker. A little flare-out pass with Schnelker going off to the right. More of a standard T formation this time. Connolly gives. The ball goes off to Webster. He roars off to the left. He runs into a lot of opposition around the three-yard line. And that's about it. This Mansky and Lipscomb. One coming high, the other one low. And Webster, you'll notice, is doing a lot of the inside running today along with Triplett. The ball is on the three. It'll be second down and goal to go. The Colts lead seven to nothing. On a magnificent heave by Johnny Unitas. Baltimore goes into practically a nine-man line. There goes Connolly Fake, flips into the flat. Gifford trap. Gifford is running back this way. Will Gifford try to run it through? He is now back to the 10. He fights his way to the 8. But they nail him. A lot of running. Most of it laterally. And Gifford was trapped and had to come the other way. Johnny Sample eventually got a hold of him along with Carl Tassett. But the Giants have lost yardage. Third down coming up. The ball is on the 8. Five-yard loss. Gifford was at one time trying to find somebody open. I believe he thrown the ball, but not taking any chances. He put it under his arm and took off and tried to hit the goal line. Here they come, led by their center, Y. Tucker. Webster's being used as a flanker this time. Gifford is back along with Trippett. Connolly waiting for the snap. Chuck Connolly goes back again. He's looking to throw to the goal line. Oh, really? He elects to run and he nearly... Line. Big Daddy Lipscomb poured through that time. Here it is, fourth down, and the Giants are now back on the 16-yard line. Eight yards lost as Connolly tried to throw, and that defense is really blitzing in there now. Now it could be the Giants will go for the field goal. Coming into the game is Pat Summerall. This fellow won a couple of games for the Giants doing all of the scoring during the regular season. They're going to try to boot it from around the 23. There she goes, up! And the kick is good! 23-yard field goal by Pat Summerall. For the coach, Unitas Moore, Mike Summer, who took over for Dupre. He was hurt midway through the season, and Alan Amici. Unitas goes to pass. He looks, he fires. It's taken by much uh, He had it, and then it almost got away. His second effort, he crossed the ball to the 40, and he has it back on the 40-yard line. Lynn Call, down the Jim Mutzler almost lost that one. So this brings them up five yards, and they're one yard shy of a first down. Unitas is fantastic. He can throw short. He can throw long. Hottest piece of merchandise in football today, Johnny Unitas. He was the all-pro football player, voted by the writers. All right, here's a quick spot pass to Raymond Berry. They only needed a yard. They make three or four. So the Colts have netted another first down. This will put the ball on the 44. You can see it was a four-yard spot pass to Ray Berry. In the championship game last year, Berry established two records. One for total passes caught in one game, and yardage gained on passes completed. Colts have a third down and 20, and let's see what they elect to do. Mike Summers off to the right. Giants ready to rush in with a five-man line. United has got to go back. He fades 10. He looks. He falls on the far side of the line. Leroy has it at the 45-yard line of New York. He's to the 40. He is down to the 35-yard line. And Lenny Moore made a remarkable grab on a pass that was a bit low, but he stayed with it. Jimmy Patton finally nailed him on the 35-yard line. And here are the reasons that the Colts are the world champions. With a third and 20, they come right out of it to gain a first down. Here it is, Baltimore with a first down on New York's 55-yard line. Moore is being flanked wide to the left. The ball goes this time on a handoff to Mike Summer, who dashes into the right side of the line and digs his way down to the 32-yard line. Cliff Livingston again comes in for the tackle of UCLA. Place the ball now in the 33, a gain of two yards, second down and eight to go. Unitas continues to call the shot. Unitas back, boats one into the flat. Pricer has it, and he is down in a hurry on an open field tackle by Hollins Barry. Coming across, the veteran from Washington State. He had figured that one out. While this pass is completed, 
The ball is still at the 35 at the loss of two yards. Third down and ten coming up. They're going to try a field goal from the 42-yard line. Right around the 42. Lining up Steve Myra. It'll be held by Ray Brown. There's the boat in over in. Up she goes. And it is not good. It is off a bit to the left. A long field goal endeavor by Myra. So after the ball, zooms its way out of the end zone. It will come to the 20, and it will go to the New Yorkers. First down and 10 to go. All right, here's a pass cuddling into the flat. Gifford has it up the far side of the field. He got by one man. A flag has been dropped. It could be a clipping penalty. And Gifford, for his effort, throws the ball out to the 27-yard line. Szymanski brought him down. Apparently a giant man who was trying to block has clipped one of the coats. So they bring it back to the 10-yard line. Half the distance. They started the play, you'll remember, from the 20. Are a bit uh, different if the man is running with the ball or if the ball is in the air. Anyway, Connolly's back in the two-yard line. He hauls off and throws to Schnelker. He takes it at the 20-yard line, where he is swarmed under by Szymanski and Kyle Tassif. However, the Colts have moved it out to the 22. 12 yards beaten up on that pass. Bob Schnelker, the receiver. Here today at 7-3, the Colts lead. Giants ready. Connolly back. Look, he fakes a pass. He's being rushed. He tries to get out of it. He has to get the football back on the 11-yard line. Connolly lost his footing. Gino Marchetti was putting the pressure on with Ray Krause of Maryland. That big Krause is substituted now for Lipscomb in that line defensively. Connolly losing quite a bit of yards. It's back to the 11. Chandler will kick it from around the three-yard line now. They've got a very wide kick formation. Chandler boots. He gets off a dandy this time. Waiting back on the 30-yard line. It's Johnny Sample. Sample gets ahead of steam. He's at the 35. He goes. He digs away from one man, but then is caught from behind on a good tackle that brings him down at the 39-yard line. That tackle was made by Rosie Brown. That shows you those big boys get in there and tackle those little speedsters once in a while. Raymond Berry flank wide this way. United goes back, gives it on a draw play. Up through the middle comes Adam Eakey. He goes for that inside uh, distance and this time works his way up to the 45-yard line. Penn State Street, Rosie Greer moved in along with Huff, who is considered one of the top linemen in the National Football League. Sammy Huff, and what a game he played against these Colts a year ago. The ball is on the 45. So, second down, four to go. Let's see what uh, Eubanks team will do. Moore coming this way wide. Giants going to an eight-man line, and it's the quarterback sneak, and United, I'm sure, made it. United goes up through there, and with his nose low to the ground, I'm sure he's up at least to the 50, and that's where he is. Robustelli is out of the pile, but a first down netted by the Colts. Five first downs for the Baltimoreans on a 50-yard line. Moore is wide, very wide. They flip the ball to Ray Berry. Barry has it inside the 40, goes down to the 37-yard line. Jimmy Patton gets him down. There comes that great pass receiver, Raymond Barry. This moves the ball ahead and puts it on New York's 37. Another first down for Baltimore. Two men are covering more at the moment. Unitas goes back over the line, shoots one down to much square, and it's good. And it looks like a little foot pass that's going to get him another first down. He rolls down to the 25 or 24-yard line. Dick Nolan makes the tackle, but another first down for the Colts. The Colts are rolling now. Now the Colts are trying to uh, pick up another touchdown here. Time running out in the second period. More wide. United's back. United saves. All off. Flips one of the sidelines. The man is out. A foul. It was intended for Raymond Berry. I'm sure that he was out of bounds when he picked it off. He went out of bounds at the 10-yard line. So that will stop the clock. Incompleted forward pass and returns it to the 21-yard line. Third down and seven. Billy Pricer now operating at fullback. 
former All-American from the University of Oklahoma. The Colts are not going to try for a field goal. They're going to try for a first down or six points. United goes back. Small pocket. He uh, is caught. He can't get rid of the ball as a giant defense rushes in. And down goes United on the 25-yard line. Cat Cabbage and Robustelli converging from the two flanks did the job that time on United, and the ball will go over. Giants have held, and of course the Giants have been noted all season for their great goal line stands, and you'll remember they gave up fewer points than any other team in the National Football League. Make it the 26-yard line. All right, the ball is given as Connolly lines up, gives it in there to the punching fullback. Bill King who brings it out to the 29. Three-yard gain. He was nailed by Dick Szymanski, the middle linebacker. They're going to kick now with Chandler deep. Gets his foot into the ball. It's a high, zooming kick that's going to be taken on the 20-yard line. It's a fair catch indicated by John Sample, one of the safety men. And there is no return. And it will go to Baltimore. First down and 10 to go on their own 22. Coach ball in their own 22. You know, we were very fearful today that we would have rain. But the weatherman has really cooperated. The field is absolutely dry. And the two teams, of course, have no alibis today. Barry and all caught 14 touchdown passes during the regular season. Giant man jumps the gun. Unitas goes back to pass. He's standing on his own seven. He throws downfield. Taken by Raymond Barry. Barry's up to the 40. Goes out of bounds. Steps out around the 43-yard line. I believe the Colts will have an option here. It appeared to me that Robicelli jumped across the line of scrimmage. So the Colts are going to take the game. This will give Baltimore their eighth first down. And it brings the Colts now out to the 44-yard line. Their own 44-yard line. Unitas to Barry. Jerry Richardson has come in, and he's flanked wide to the right in that Baltimore backfield. Johnny Unitas goes 10 yards, beats the pass again. He is rushed, and he is smeared for a loss back on the 37-yard line. That giant line really poured in on him that time. Cat Cabbage and Roosevelt Greer. All right, we're set to go. It's Baltimore with the ball. They're putting a tremendous rush on Unitas right now. Third down, Unitas uh, fakes a pass, throws one, Mutzler grabs it, Mutzler has it up on the 41 or 2 yard line. He really hung that one on a peg, and Bill Sitz, who has gone into the game for Patton, made the tackle along with Dick Nolan. They're going to place it on the 42 yard line. However, it is fourth down coming up, and the Colts still need quite a bit of yardage. Dave Scherer, S-H-E-R-E-R, -E a 21 year older, who does the kicking, is coming in for the Colts. Baltimore leading one to three. The officials are letting the coaches know now that we have two minutes to go in the first half. The defensive units have been taking over. Webster wide, Connerly deep, Connerly to pass. Shoots one intended for Schnelker. Schnelker goes high. He has the ball on the 45. He goes to the 40. He goes to the 35. He took the ball away from Pellington. A tremendous throw as Connerly hung that ball out and Schnelker really did make a catch on that one. Bob Schnelker on a set of heroics here has put New York now within scoring distance. They are now on the 34-yard line. First down, New York. Schnelker picked it off and practically took the ball away from his defender. 7-3, Baltimore's leading. What a ball game it's turning out to be as Connolly goes back, pitches into the flat, taken by King. Bill King rolls for the far side of the field. He doesn't get out of bounds. And the clock is still rolling now with approximately 35 seconds to go. For his effort, he gets the ball down to the 31-yard line. Szymanski covers him up. It's a three-yard gain on that flat screen-type pass into the left flat. Third and seven. Time is important now from the 37-yard line. Remember, he kicked one from the 23. Connolly holds. There's the kick. She is up. The kick is good. The kick is good. A 37-yard perfect placement by Pat Summerall. And what do you know? Now, there's an argument. They're waiting for the ball to be brought out from behind the goalpost. And the Colts are throwing up. It is good. 
Arnie Gibbs indicates it is good. The coach claimed it apparently missed the upright. The score is now Baltimore 7, the New York Giants 6. They're howling here in Baltimore, and you will, or maybe you do not know, but in this huge concrete horseshoe, many thousands of the spectators are actually behind the end zone, and they believe that they can see the kick as well as Mr. Ron Gibbs. I notice that Marchetti continues to point to the upright here on the right side, and then he seems to be very, very definite that that ball missed. And Patrick would buy some from Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. It's halftime now, and those fans down in the end zone off to our right uh, are still doing a bit of yelling about the field goal kicked by Pat Summerall, the 37-yarder, that moved the Giants within one point of the Baltimore Colts. I think uh, most of these more than 57,000 fans uh, are a little bit stunned by the fact the score is only 7-6 here at halftime because they were expecting a wide-open type of ball game the score to be much larger. But if you followed the Baltimore Colts, you know that the Colts primarily have been a last-half ball club during the course of the season. Now, to get the game underway today, the New York Giants received, and uh, with the ball on the 20-yard line, the first down and 10 to go, Connerly on the very first play fired a pass to Kyle Roth that covered 22 yards and moved the ball up to the Giant 42. And then uh, Frank Gifford, the great running back, swept right in for 22 yards to move the ball down to the Baltimore 36-yard line, and it appeared that the New York Giants would uh, be on their way and pick up the way six or seven points in this ball game. But then uh, Gene Big Daddy Lipscomb, who played high school football at Miller High in Detroit, he did not play any college football, Lipscomb came through with perhaps the finest defensive play of the first half of this ball game, and he broke through to get Connerly uh, way back on the Baltimore 49 yard line, just as it appeared uh, they might go in. And then uh, after the Colts could move the ball and the Giants tried it again, then the Colts took over once more. And Johnny Unitas then uh, cut loose with one of his famous touchdown passes. Unitas just looked the defense right out of position. This fellow has great perspective. He has the type of eyes that he can just look and uh, spot both sidelines and right down the field. So he looked his defense uh, out of position and then hit Lenny Moore, who had gone down to the right sideline and button hooked back, and that play covered 60 yards, about 40 yards on the run by Lenny Moore, and then Steve Meyer added the point after to make it 7 nothing, And they had 10-5 to go in the first quarter as the Baltimore Colts covered 80 yards in six plays. But then in the first quarter, Pat Summerall booted a 23-yard field goal to put him uh, back in the ball game, and then with only 11 seconds to go, Summerall booted one from 37 yards out, and that made it 7-6 at halftime. Unitas was very hot with his passing. At one stage, just before the end of the uh, first half, he had completed 11 out of 16 for 166 yards passing. Here at halftime at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium, the Colts marching band performing right now, this band which has been active since the Colts entered the All-America Conference in 1947, it's comprised of 123 members, including six majorettes, 13 cheerleaders, and seven color guards. The director is Bob Sisson, who, with many others, has been with the band since it was formed. And today's show, as are all Colts band halftimes, was written by Bob's wife. And right now, check out some of that famous Baltimore band music. We'll be back in a moment. now for the Baltimore Colts, 25 Hawkins, and Sample, and there's the whistle, and here's the boot, and this one is spinning around and uh, picked up by number 25 Hawkins, who's back to the 20, the 25, the 30, 35, fumbles the ball at the 35, and it's covered by the Baltimore Colts, and it is Sherm Plunkett from Maryland State who recovered the ball, and he recovered it for yardage gain. So the ball will be spotted on the 38-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 to go. For the Baltimore Colts, running from their own 38-yard line, Baltimore leads by a score of 7-6 to six as this crowd just goes with crowd here at the Baltimore Stadium. The T formation, the balance line, a five-man defensive line, waiting for it now is Unitas. Unitas on the give on the draw play to Amici, who hits the middle of the line across the 40 to the 41, and is dropped at the 42-yard line. And the tackle was made by Andy Robuselli from Little Arnold College, 6'1", 235 pounds, and Dick Moduleski from Maryland. 
Ball stopped in the 42-yard line. A pickup of four on the play. That's second down. And about six to go now for the Baltimore Colts, running from their own 42-yard line. They lead by one point, seven to six. Chair is standing back about 12 or 13 yards. Back on the 32-yard line. That means he'll boot from about the 35. Snap back to him from Nutter, and he gets his kick away. And a good kick it is. A high spiral. And coming down on the nine-yard line, it is second there by Crow, who comes back to the 13-yard line and free Baltimore Colts hitting. Billy Pricer, who does a lot of tackling on the uh, kicks, was downfield, but he didn't make the tackle on that one. So the uh, tackle was made, Steve Meyer, number 65, right on the 13-yard line. That's a kick of 44 yards. And they split Gifford out to the left, taken by Connerly. goes back to throw, throws a swing pass to uh, Phil King, and he is to the 20, the 25, and is dropped at the 25-yard line. The swing pass out in the right flat. And coming up from his defensive left halfback position was Carl Tassett, 5'11", 190 pounder, along with Andy Nelson, uh, to make the tackle for the Baltimore Colts. The ball started on the 25-yard line, where it is a first down for the New York Giants, who are trailing by one. They have seven first downs so far in this ball game. Out of the huddle, they come with Ray with Tech over the ball. Frank Gifford is flanked out wide to the right. The formation with that balanced line, the six-man defensive line now employed by Baltimore. Waiting for it is Gifford again, is the uh, quarterback, Connolly, and he gives off this time to Webster, trying to turn the corner. He cuts in at the 30 and goes on to the 35-yard line before he's pulled down by Bill Pellington, who tripped him up. He turned the corner, got a block, and moved it to the 35-yard line. And Sample was in there along uh, with Pellington to make the tackle for the Baltimore Colts. Series originating now in the 25, and that ball is just short of the 35, which means it's second down and about a half yard to go for the Giants who are moving over ground now with 11 minutes and 5 seconds to go in the third quarter. The score, Baltimore 7, New York 6. Out of the huddle, they come again. Wide to the right this time. Comes Alec Webster from North Carolina. And Dusaka is the left end and split out to the left. Schnucker's in tight at the right end. Waiting for it is Connerly. Gives to Gifford. Coming wide. Looks for a pass receiver. Throws one downfield. And it is completed to Shelfer on the 48. East to the 47-yard line. And drops on the 47-yard line. That's the play the Giants have utilized many times. And Sample is the man who made the tackle as Connerly takes the pass back from center and hands off to Frank Gifford. Now, many times, uh, Gifford will run with the ball, but in this particular play, he uh, stepped back and fired a forward pass to Snelker that covered 18 yards and gives New York a first down on the 47-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. Wide to the right comes Morris in the halfback. Connerly, the quarterback, waiting for it. Goes back to throw pass, looks for receiver, throws one downfield to Snelker. He's got it on the 30, goes on down to the 26. He tackles on the 26-yard line by Sample. And now the New York Giants are on the move, and the Giants fans who came down from New York are beginning to root for their ball club as they have it down on the 26-yard line of Baltimore. As Johnny Connerly mixing up his passes beautifully, has them on the move. Morrison goes out of the halfback spot, 20 yards picked up on the play. That's nine first downs for New York. On the 26-yard line, first and 10 to go for New York. Out of the huddle they come. They have the great kicker and Pat Summerall. The formation of the balance fine. Rhodes put out. Here's Connerly going back to throw again. Back to Tuckson. He throws one and he is batted down. Beautiful defensive play at the last minute. Took the ball right out of the hands of Gifford. And that was Johnny Sample from Maryland State. And he hit the yard marker over there. And it may have hurt him a little bit as he bumped into that yard marker over on the far side. But that was a tremendous defensive play on the part of John Sample. As he reached up and just batted the ball right out of the hand of Frank Gifford. Slightly off to the right of the goal post. And this field goal, if he makes it, will put the Giants ahead. It's Barker has booted it up, and it is good. And there's a timeout on the field with a score. The New York Giants, nine. The Baltimore Colts, seven. Side to the right, now comes Baseka. Put out to the left this time is Gifford, and going back is Connerly to throw, looking for a receiver. Throws one to Gifford. He's got it on the 37-yard line and knocked out of bounds by Sample immediately. Frank Gifford all by himself. And he caught the ball down on the 37-yard line, and he was hit out of bounds immediately. It's the first down, 18 yards, gained on the play. And so the New York Giants are storming back in the second half of this ball game at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. They have it on the 37-yard line, 11 first downs picked up by New York. They're in Baltimore territory. First down and 10 to go on the 37. Baltimore with that 4-4 defense jammed in. Waiting for it is Connerly. He's going back to throw again. Throws one. The sideline pass is completed to Schnelker, and Schnelker is out of bounds. On the 27-yard line, the sideline pass, the sideline just below us, and Carl Tassif is the man who knocked him out of bounds over on the west side of the field. Now the sun is hiding behind the clouds here at Baltimore, and the officials, uh, Charlie Berry moves over along with Ron Gibbs, the referee, and they're going to bring the chain in to take the measurement to see if 
the Giants have been able to uh, pick up the first down. They had the third down. In the Five New York first downs uh, in this quarter, and none for Baltimore. So it's a little bit short of a first down. And waiting for it is Connerly. Let's see if Connerly tries to go. He gives it off to Webster, and Webster's hit right at the line of scrimmage. And I don't know whether he made it or not. They're going to have to bring that chain in again. And there is Donovan, along with the linebacker, Samantha, and Lipscomb. In the middle of that Baltimore line, just pile driving in there to stop Webster just as he hit the line of scrimmage. He didn't have more than six or seven inches to go, but the question becomes, did he get it? And you're going to hear a tremendous roar go up here from the Baltimore fans if he did not make it because they are bringing the chain in again. And here's an all-important play. And this could be one of the big plays of this ball game at Baltimore this afternoon. And Kyle Roth, the captain of the Giants, is standing right there with the officials and looking as they place it down. He did not make it. And the Colts take over. Anymore, flank wide to the right. 4-4 defense employed by New York and waiting for it is John DeUnitis. And he's back to throw, gets protection, throws the swing past the price at the 20. He's at the 25-yard line. And he is tackled in there by Dick Lynch on the 25-yard line. Also in on the tackle is Harlan Savari from Washington State and Bill Stitz with the ball on the 25-yard line. And so the Baltimore coach, John DeUnitis, hitting his fullback, Billy Price. As we mentioned before the start of this ball game, Alan Amici uh, was injured. Uh, in the last couple of games of the season, he saw only limited service. Wide to the left goes Raymond Berry. Wide to the right is Lenny Moore. Deep formation with the balance line, a six-man defensive line employed now by New York. And the ball is second by Unitas, who rolls to the left, looks for a receiver, throws one completely to Berry. Berry's got it on the 45-yard line, and he's tackled immediately on the 45-yard line by Dick Lynch. It's the first down for Baltimore. And now the fans of Baltimore go wild as the coach starts to move. They rule it the 47-yard line. On the 47-yard line, where it'll be a first down and 10 to go, and that's a pickup of 18 yards on the play. Pricer is the closest back, and waiting for it now is the quarterback, Unitas. Throws a quick pass to Lenny Moore on the 40. He's down to the 35. He's to the 30, the 25. He's to the 20, the 15. He's down to the 12. He's tackled on the 12-yard line. As Lenny Moore moves for a first down on the 12-yard line, and Patton and Lynch made the tackle for the New York Giants, and listen to this crowd now. Thirty-seven yards gained on the play, and John Unitas was just as cool as he could possibly be as he hit many more. And more with those big strides moved down to the 12, first down. And here's the give to Pricer through the middle at the 10. Stopped on the 10-yard line, possibly the 9 by Livingston. And cut down in there on the inside the 10-yard line, wait for him to mark it. Roosevelt Greer was also in on the tackle. Now here's a change defensively for New York. They place the ball on the 9-yard line. At the gate of three on the play, and the Colts are knocking on the door. Bill Stitt goes out, and the Giants lead 9-7 to seven as Unitas calls the signal. Rolls to his right, throws the pass, and is completed to Mutzler. And Mutzler caught the ball on the five and was out of bounds on the four. Knocked out of bounds by Lyndon Crow. Wait for the officials to bring it in. It'll be around the neighborhood of the four-yard line. On the four-yard line, and the... New York Giants trying to uh, get that defense to stiffen now and hold the Baltimore coast. And checking in number 86 for Baltimore. Wide to the right goes number 86, Sheriff. Waiting for it now is John DeUnitis, and Unitas rolling to his right. He's going to cry for it, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Johnny Unitas going on four yards. can hear me over the bedlam at Baltimore. 84 yards and 10 plays. Unitas with the last four. Steve Meyer will attempt. Ray Brown will hold. And now here are the Giants moving in before the ball was snapped. Trying to get in there and block this kick. Score right now is 13 to 9 in favor of the Baltimore Colts who moved 84 yards in 10 plays. And the big play, of course, was Unitas to Lenny Moore again. And then Unitas rolled to his right and stepped into the end zone four yards for the touchdown. Ray Brown will hold. Steve Meyer waiting. Spotted, booted up. Good. And there's a time out on the field with a score. The Baltimore Colts, 14. The New York Giants, 9. You know how.
Fossil, our producer in our booth here at Baltimore, is about the only fellow who figured this would be a low-scoring ball game. Wide to left, Connerly back to throw, throws a long one downfield, it's intercepted. It's intercepted by Nelson. He's at the 25, he's coming wide to the 20, and he is at the 15. He's out of bounds on the 15-yard line. Andy Nelson and Memphis State. Andy Nelson intercepted the ball on the 30 and ran it down to the 15-yard line, knocked out of bounds by Phil King. Now the Baltimore Colt fans go wild. It's first down and 10 to go. Baltimore leading, and John DeUnitis gives off to his fullback, Amici, who hits the middle of the line. Amici's down to the 12-yard line, and Rosie Greer in to make the tackle, along with uh, Majuleski, and they bring him down on the 12. Ball on the 12. Second and seven to go. Unitas barks the signal. Unitas back to throw. Looks for a receiver. Throws one. It's completed to Richardson, and Richardson scores! The Baltimore. The Baltimore Colts, the world champion, threatened to break this one wide open as they lead 20 to 9. The play covered 12 yards, a pass from United to Richardson. Attempting will be Steve Meyer, Ray Brown of Mississippi will hold. Ball is fucked, it's up, and it is good. And there's a timeout on the field with a score. The Baltimore Colts put it on the New York Giants' nine. Ray with the scout over the ball. Frank Gifford is put out wide to the left. Charlie Connerly at quarterback is going back to pass. Looks for a receiver, throws the sideline, pass to Gifford, and it's out of bounds and incomplete. And broken up by Johnny Sample, I believe, had he been able to catch the ball, he still would have been out of bounds. So the ball goes back to the 17-yard line again where it'll be. Second down and 10 to go for New York. Only one pass interception today, and that was a very costly one. Second and 10 from the 17, and here's Connerly going back again. Throws one, and this one is caught on the 29-yard line, and the tackle is made immediately on the 29-yard line on Bob Schnelker of Bowling Green by Don Schenick, the linebacker, on the 29-yard line. So it'll be a first down for New York, and so the one hope the Giants have now is for their veteran, almost ageless quarterback, Charlie Connerly, to fill the air with the football. And so Connerly has just got to pass, pass, pass to get back in the game as they trail by 12. Wide to the right goes Joe Morrison. At 12 first downs for New York. Connerly back to throw again. Looking for receivers, being rushed, going to be knocked down. Brought down back on the 24-yard line. As the coach swarmed in on top of him, led by Art Donovan, the defensive left tackle and big daddy Lipscomb. The right tackle and Don Joyce, the right end, and Gino Marchetti. The front wall of Baltimore in on top of him on the 25, so he lost on the play four yards. Second down, 14 yards to go. Coming out of there is number 89, Marchetti. And he's being replaced by Ordell Brassi from South Dakota, 6'4", 235 pounds. And out of the huddle come the Giants. Wide the left is Gifford. Kyle Rode is the left end. Stalker's the right end, and he spit out. And here's Connerly going back to throw again. Looks for a receiver, throws one, it is intercepted by Sample at the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Baltimore! Sample picked it off at the 42-yard line and sprinted down the sideline just below us, the western sideline, for the touchdown. That makes it 27-9, and Steve Meyer will attempt to make it 28, and the Colts are breaking this one wide open in the fourth quarter. Ray Brown will hold, waiting for the snap back now. The ball is spotted, booted up, and it is good. And the Baltimore Colts, 28, the New York Giants, 9. A 42-yard run by the pass interception, the second pass interception of the ball game for Baltimore, who intercepted a total of 40 during the course of the regular season. Charlie Connerly, the quarterback, with a first and 10 on the giant 26. Connerly barks the signal, waits and takes it, and gives off this time to Gifford, who's running wide around the right side, cuts back at the 30, goes to the 35, the 40, 45, all the way to the 49, to the 50-yard line before he's finally tackled. The tackle was made by Ray Krause. And they're going to mark it as the 49-yard line in Giant territory. 
First down and 10 to go for New York from their own 49. 23 yards by the running back, Frank Gifford, number 16 of the New York Giants. Kyle Rote comes out to the left. Connerly waits for it. And he takes it, goes back to throw, rolling to the left, cocks his arm, throws one to Gifford, and Gifford's going to throw a pass. He throws one downfield. It's intercepted by Sample on the 45, to the 50, the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30. He's down to the 26-yard line before he is brought down. Johnny Sample intercepted the pass again. And the Colt fans go completely wild as he runs it all the way back down to the 26-yard line. 27 yards on the run by he got it to the 27. New York, their last five pass attempts, Baltimore has intercepted three of them. The quarterback, John Unitas, he's got second and eight. Unitas throws one to Barry. Barry has it. He is dropped on the 17-yard line. Raymond Barry, the tackle made right on the 17-yard line. So the Colts are on the move again. Dick Lynch, the defensive right halfback, is the man who made the tackle. Now Lenny Moore starts in the ball game. He's being called back. So Steve Meyer will attempt it from the 25. Waiting for the snap. The ball is spotted. It's booted. It is headed that direction, and it is good. And the score now, the Baltimore Colts, 31. And the New York Giants, 9. Bye. The granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl from Pasadena, with Washington playing Wisconsin, and here's the boot. This one coming down to the 10-yard line. It's taken on the 10-yard line. And the Giants come back here to the 30, the 31-yard line. Mel Triplett running it back to the 31. So it'll be first down and 10 to go for New York from the 31-yard line. And that's it, 31 yards, 31-yard line and 31 on the scoreboard. Ball is spotted on the 30 now by the officials. They'll make it first down and 10 to go from the 30-yard line for New York. The Giants trail 31 to 9, and we have... Two minutes of playing time remaining. The Jim Lee Howell and Weeb Eubank go the two-minute warning. Ball on the 30, first down and 10 to go for New York. And these Colt fans are ready to storm on the field. Wide to the right now goes Morrison. Wide to the left is Kyle Rhodes. Waiting for it is Connerly. Connerly gives it off this time to King. King stops on the 30. The draw play just did not work. In there, number 83 to make the tackle for Baltimore was Don Joyce from Tulane, way down yonder in New Orleans. 30 years old, 6'3", 255 pounds. Andy Nelson is out of there, and Jackie Simpson is coming in defensively for Baltimore. Here's Connerly going back to throw, looks for a receiver, throws one to Rode, he's got it on the 45, he's tackled on the 48-yard line. Kyle Rote, the captain of the Giants, is tackled by Milt Davis on the 49-yard line in New York Territory, first and 10. One minute and 15 seconds of playing time remaining, Baltimore leads 31-9, to nine. they have scored 24 points, in the fourth quarter of this ball game. And now Ray Brown comes in there, and Milt Davis, so it's Sample coming out, and here's also Davis. They get a big hand as they do. No, oh, Davis is going to stay in. It's Sample coming out, and here's Connolly to throw. He throws to Schnelker on the 35. He's down to the 32 and tackled the by Carl Tassin on the 32-yard line. It's another first down for New York on the 32-yard line, and the Giants ask for a timeout to stop the clock with only 43 weeks of playing time remaining in the final quarter of this ball game at Baltimore. Giants called the timeout. They called it to stop the clock. And the ball resting on the 32-yard line of Baltimore, where it'll be first down and 10 to go when play is resumed. But the Colts have broken the ball game wide open, and they have done it with three pass interceptions. Their second uh, straight championship in the National League. And there's Connerly back to throw. Cocks his arm and throws a long one downfield. It is caught for a touchdown by Bob Schnelker. And the Giants have scored as Bob Schlucker grabbed it for the touchdown in the end zone. Play covered 32 yards, and the Giants have scored. It's 31 to 15 right now in favor of Baltimore with 32 seconds of playing time remaining, and the Giants went 70 yards in five plays, and the touchdown play from Connerly uh, up to uh, King to Schlucker covered 32 yards and the touchdown. Now the Giants will try for the point, and Pat Summerall, who has kicked three field goals to tie the National League Championship game record today, will attempt. Holding the ball will be Charlie Connolly. It's 31 to 15, and Summerall, of course, will attempt to make it 31 to 16. Ball is spotted, booted up, and it is good. And the score now, the Baltimore Colts, 31, and the New York Giants, 16, with only 32 seconds remaining. Bye. Ten seconds of playing time remaining, and they're picking them off. I doubt if the Colts will get another play underway. 
You can hear the crowd standing in the background and picking them up. There's the gun at the end of the game in the final score, the Baltimore Colts. 31, the New York Giants 16, and the Colts are world champions again, and we'll be back in a moment with the final wrap-up of today's game.